Hey guys and welcome back to Diablo Immortal. I'm playing this game free to play and if you're playing it free to play I hope you find this video useful. I just wanted to share what I do every day, the routines I go through to give myself the biggest chances of getting upgrades to progress in the game, to get better gear, to get the resources to upgrade my gear, to uh, make sure I do everything I can to get the resources to start upgrading my gems, uh, legendary and normal gems. And depending how much time I have every day, certain things I might not do over others, but I'm just gonna give you the rundown what I do. And if you're playing this game free to play, hopefully you find uh, something useful in it. Now, of course, every day when I log in, the first thing I do is I'm gonna go into the shop and I'm gonna get my free daily reward. Then I'm usually heading over to the Elder Rift and I get my daily free crest. Then I'm gonna head over and get my daily 1K from the challenge rift. There's a hilt vendor over here, which I like to visit then. Um, the hilt vendor once a day refreshes the main loot, and that is where you can get your two daily uh, crest purchases. But the vendor also twice a day, I believe, or every 12 hours refreshes uh, the limited time loot. And actually it's in two minutes. So unlike the general tab, you can only buy one crest here. So while I'm in West March, what I usually do next is I'm doing the Sanctum. Now, if you already have unlocked all the features, this is nothing new to you, but just in case you're completely new to it, um, the Sanctum gives you access to the legacy of the Horadrum. And what that is, it's like a tablet that has the ability to ins insert vessels. Now, if you don't have any of the vessels yet, you click on the slot and it tells you actually what you have to do to get that vessel. Once you have your vessel in here, you need to upgrade them using resources and with garnets, sapphires and barrels that you can get from the actual Sanctum itself. Now, the Sanctum is literally a kind of dungeon that you walk into from the shrine and it just spawns mobs. It's a little bit random gen, so it's not always the same layout once you walk into it, but you just start killing mobs and these mobs then have a chance of uh, dropping uh, something called an aspirant key, which you, which you need. There you go, there's one that dropped already. I think it always drops four, um, maybe even sometimes five, I'm not sure, but I think it drops at least four um, from killing all the mobs in here. And they're usually quite easy mobs not a big challenge to kill them and these keys is what you need to open the chests in the end in the final treasure room so once you have those keys um, you have the first one which is free but the next one then costs one key and we have 66 keys the next one then is two keys the next one after that is four keys now I have a lot of keys right now so I'm opening the first room completely I try to do that every day and then the next one is um, eight keys. Once you open this room, you're gonna get into another room which opens up. It has a couple of mobs there. I don't think they drop keys. I don't. I haven't really seen them ever drop a key. So um, just a couple of mobs here. And then the next chest open. Now again, they get more and more expensive. This one is 10 keys. Once you open that, I think the next one is 14, then 20 something, and so on. There is a limit to this. It's not infinite. And I think from what I saw on Reddit post, uh, you need a total of 377 keys to open all the rooms. And once you finish your run, um, you're gonna go back and see what you can upgrade. Now you can upgrade obviously everything um, with the three resources. And I did in the beginning, you know, because they were very cheap, they only cost 30 here, 30 there. But what I like doing now is save them actually up and focus mainly on damage with my garnets, on life with my barrels, and then the sapphires I like to use with the upgrade for the damage and life. Another thing that you probably saw popping up when we started the Sanctum was the kill of the day. That's another thing. Every first kill of the day, you get a free reward. And that changes every seven rewards you exchange. The next thing I do while I'm in West March is actually do the Elder Rifts up to the point where I have no more crests left. So I have eight in total right now. And um, I usually use them up. So I run like three, four rifts, whatever it takes. And also to get uh, my weekly limit of fading embers, which is very important. Now, if you get lucky, you might have everybody using crest. But if not everybody's using crest, don't worry about it. You just don't get any bonuses, but you still get a minimum of eight. And then for every crest, you use an additional one. So you still get your embers. Uh, the bonus weekly embers, you can still farm afterwards when you have no crests left, where you are the one that has no crest. So it's not a big deal. 
Now the great thing about Elden Rift is they take anything between one and five minutes depending how the elites are spread out and you get um, a nice XP bonus from your kill streak if you can keep it up and continuously pull more mobs as you can see here 154 kills nearly 30,000 experience and you also have a chance of getting legendaries um, from the drop in the end and also a chance from uh, getting legendary gems if you're using your press. So here you can actually see on my last one of the three, I ended up with an actual gem. Now when I'm finished with my Elden Rifts, I see how many um, embers I have and then I go to Salic and I buy as many far runes as I can. Now they cost 18 each. I already actually bought some just after a few rifts, but I noticed I was very close to the 22 far runes that I want. And that is the next step what I do. So I check how many far runes I have after I bought as many as I can. And when I have 22, I'm gonna go and craft my legendary gem now that has a chance of becoming anything from a one to a five star. So I can sell it on the auction house for some ever, uh, extra influx on platinum. Now this I only do of course once I have 22 far runes. Once I have 22 far runes, I'm gonna head here, I'm gonna go to craft and I'm gonna craft a legendary random gem. And the thing here, you can see the breakdown when you craft them, you can see that literally five star has a 5% chance in total and a 0.045% chance to get a five out of five star. And that would sell for a lot of platinum. We're probably not gonna get one that is more than two stars. We probably get a one star, but you might even find one that you like yourself that is a one or two star. So let's craft this. Let's see what we get. And we got um, one star, which actually is cheaper to, to craft from your own resources. So we were unlucky there, but nonetheless, this is now a gem that we actually can sell on the auction house. So I'm gonna head over to the market and I'm just gonna list it. It costs you a little bit of gold and uh, they take a 20%, a 15% cut from whatever you sell it for. You can see here, this one is 908. So I'm gonna sell mine for as close as possible to that at 870. We're gonna list it and hopefully somebody's gonna end up buying it. So once I have all this done, I'm gonna head over to the bounty board and I'm gonna start picking up uh, all my bounties. Now you can only pick up four at a time. You can do up to eight a day. Now at this point, it depends if you are already in a shadow clan or not. So once you're part of the shadows, then again, if you're not, you can skip that step. You have activities that unlock and these activities are daily activities. Now I'm gonna, at this point of my session of my rotation, I'm ignoring everything except the contracts. So the contracts are basically like a quest. A lot of times you find that things are happening while you do all the things. In this case, what I'm talking about is world events. When you're in an area doing your bounties or your contracts, you can see these blue quest markers and they have timers, some of them. And when they're run down, a world event happens, usually world boss. In this case, the haunted carriage will spawn and once defeated, the tax collector will spawn. The tax collector, when defeated, will actually have a chance to drop a vessel. Uh, for me, it was always a 100% chance on all the world bosses. They, I never had a world boss that I killed where I didn't get the vessel. And once you have it, of course, it doesn't drop anymore, but you also have a chance of getting legendaries. So always make sure you participate in this world events if they're actually right now happening as you're questing in that area. And these vessels then you can put in to start upgrading them in your sanctum. Now, not a lot of these events are very clear. So if you go to the library of Sultan Cole, for example, you will see a little quest here that says collect five pages. And anybody obviously can do that at the same time. You see little glowing pages on the ground. And if you pick them up after you have five, you can craft a tomb. And that tomb can either be a book on the ground where you can click on and get to a treasure room, or it will spawn one of the, I think, two world bosses uh, that are possible in the library. Could be three, I'm not 100% sure, but sometimes you see in chat that people will say, hey, we just spawned in a golem, we just spawned in uh, that world boss. So go to the library and then once the boss is spawned, you can see as well where he spawns and uh, join in killing them for the extra vessel. So always keep an eye out on these blue quests while you're out and about. Another thing to keep an eye out on is general events in the area you're questing. Like this one, you're cleansing the rod. It just pops up when you walk into a certain area. And once you do what it says, it pops up a chest. And these events give you enchanted dust, some drops. And they also have a chance of one of them drops being a legendary, though that is a very, very rare occurrence. Also, a lot of those quests are not just happening by themselves. Sometimes you see an NPC with the same blue three quest markers over their head. Just talk to them and they start an event around them. It's usually not far yet 
have to walk and you get your extra kills chance of monsters essence and in the end some enchanted dust some resources for upgrading your gear and a chance at legendary drops while you're out questing also keep an eye out for these legendary mobs these legendary mobs um i think have an extremely high chance of dropping legendaries something in the area of 25 to 30 percent uh, but definitely around 20 percent i have rarely not received a legendary from killing them most of the time i did so in this case you can see here i got some legs so again most of the time i did but i know it's not a hundred percent chance but it is a very very high percentage now speaking of elite mobs uh, the legendaries are not the only ones you should be worrying about um of course do the blue ones as well do the yellow ones um, do all the special mobs that you come across. They all um, drop gold, extra experience, and they all have a chance, even though it's a minor chance, um, the easier the elites are on dropping legendaries. You might also come across world chests. A lot of the chests that you find in the world, you click on them, you get a little bit of gold, and again, just do it. It's, it's literally no time wasted. You walk past them anyway. However, there's these ornate chests every now and then that require four players to open it. I don't know if they have any special loot, but all the ones I opened so far is just drop gold and maximum yellow items. I believe they have a chance of dropping legendaries, but I've never seen it. If you're in a party of four already and you're questing together, absolutely just click on them because it takes no extra time. Another thing I want to quickly mention is hidden layers. Now, hidden layers are the ones that you find in the open world. They look in dark wood like this, for example. Now, this one isn't active. In different areas, they look differently, but they usually have a common look in each area. And um, once you find one that is open or you can see someone looking for an invite and chat like for a hidden layer and um, participate in them as well while you're questing, it's a small side track that is well worth it because hidden layers have an increased drop chance of gems. And I think you can get up to six gems from them every day. So when you see the opportunity, do them. I might not be able in this video to show you actually one running because they're very random and you kind of have to be lucky to come across them. But you might team up as a party at the end of the day to um, just go hunt hidden layers. But I just thought I mentioned them because it is also something that is very handy when you come across it while you're doing your uh, bounties or contract. And let's talk about Monsters Essences. Monsters Essences drop randomly from mobs as you play through the game. However, whenever you have 10 of them, you actually will no longer get any. So make sure that as soon as you get 10, go to whatever the closest uh, nearest safe zone is that has one of those bestiary uh, books and hand them in because the moment you hand them in, they're gone and you can collect more monstrous essences. Now, while you can only hand in three a day to get battle points, you can hand them in infinitely every day to get your extra rewards that drop in the end after handing it in, which also has a high chance actually to drop legendaries. So once every two or three hand ins, I do get actually a legendary item. And if you use the portal like I did, you can just click on it to go straight back to where you were questing and continue with your uh, bounty or contracts and continue getting monstrous essence drops. Now, I personally identify my gear at the end of my session, or at least at this point of my session, unless I'm in dire, dire need of an upgrade to get a higher combat rating. So if I'm just sitting below the required combat rating of Hell 2, for example, where I get a little bit of a penalty in my damage and higher damage being done to me, I might want to get that extra combat rating quickly, so I identify immediately. However, once I'm sitting in a comfortable kind of area where I'm okay, I wait until the end of my session. Also, one of the things I would keep in mind, don't just blindly upgrade. This is an upgrade because combined, those attributes give you a higher combat rating. The way combat rating is used from the attributes is one to one. So 44 fortitude, it doesn't matter if it's fortitude, vitality or strengths, 44 attributes will give you 44 combat rating. So this here in total will give me 92 combat rating. And this only here will give me only 54. However, if I don't need the combat rating and I'm okay with it, I'm not going to switch this item over because I would lose my strength and I'd rather be more powerful fighting the mobs that I can comfortably fight at the combat rating I'm at. Also check if any of the items you have has extractable properties. So that way you can continue collecting those. For the shoulder, I already have everything. So that shoulder, I'm just gonna scrap now that I have on me. For the legs, even though it has a higher combat rating, I don't really need it. So you might wanna keep it for when you need to go over a certain milestone, but I don't need it. So I'm just gonna scrap this one 
by extracting the essence out of it to have that in my collection to be used for another item when I come across it. Now let's talk about activities uh, from your shadow clans and shadows versus immortals. When you are part of the shadows, you will have this menu available to you and in there you can see these activities. Now the activities that I would do every day if possible, unless you're like me, you're actually very busy, it's your job and things like that, and you only have time in the evening or maybe during lunchtime to spend a little bit on your phone, you might not want to do all of them. But the one I would recommend to try to do every day is the assembly, because that is a huge amount of experience you get. You get like um, basically the what it is every two three minutes it rotates between different blessings which means it's random people that are in the room get selected to hunt out blessings and you have to run around and trying to click on them to see to receive a blessing and they can click on you as well so it's basically like a cat and mouse game like a little bit where you have to try to get a blessing but they give you each blessing gives you 280,000 or just over 280,000 experience so don't miss out on that especially very early in your very low levels of your paragraph levels getting all the blessings could be more than a level another activity that i would recommend to definitely do daily if you can um, i can't do it every day um, is the raid vault the raid vault is a, a party of four that runs really quickly through a dungeon similar to an elden rift where you have a lot of mobs but each of these mobs drop essences and it's a free fall so you will fight with other players to pick up those essences and you can see who has the most but basically all it is it's a little bit competitive killing all the mobs together but trying to get those essences that they drop as quickly as possible for yourself and once you're finished depending how many essences you've got that you get like a certain amount of hills as a reward you get some gold and you also have ch a chance of getting a legendary drop but it's mainly for the hills that you're there the hills uh, are what you need to buy more uh, crests you know rare crests from the hill vendor and so on another activity that i personally enjoy that i try to do at least once every two days or three days is when i have time in the evenings the battlegrounds now the battlegrounds is the pvp there's a battleground vendor you talk to then and you can see here I'm doing it um, as much as I can like during the week and I'm rank 11. I'm probably not going to get to rank 1 or into the top 5 again. I was rank 2 um, last week but the whales are basically going to be controlling the board. The reason for that, of course, is the legendary gems that you get from Elden Rifts if you use legendary crests. Now, you might get a free one every month that you use and you might get lucky with a gem, but uh, in general, the pay-to-win players can buy up to 10. That's where that whole thing comes from, 10 to $25 Elden Rift runs because they buy 10 legendary crests. And the bought crests, unlike the ones you get for free, can be stacked up to 10 times per Elden Rift run. And if you then team up with another three players that also use 10 legendary crests they bought in the shop, you have a huge amount of legendaries dropping. And that is where you get the edge, because even unupgraded, even if you don't upgrade them, if you get gems like the Phoenix Ashes, you already have a huge edge over anybody else in PvP, especially in a 1v1 scenario, because as you can see here, it prevents a kill shot applies a shield to you and then absorbs 660 percent damage during that time of your base damage so the higher your base damage is the more you absorb and after that you get a nice heal for 20 percent they will control the leaderboard because in the long run they will uh, continue playing and win more games but they don't have a high win ratio themselves because it's not a one-man sport battlegrounds it's a team sport so you can see here people have much higher ratings i have 59 percent now i didn't play as many games as rush obviously so my percentage is based on lower games but you can see they don't win all the games either now at this stage now when i've done my basic activities and then depending on the day how much time i had i might have done other activities like the battlegrounds and all that that's when i usually start looking hey at my gear do i have enough resources to do any upgrades of course the higher your upgrade level the more resources you need so in this case i have to still save up a little bit and you can only go also as high as your paragon level allows you so i still have plenty of time to get uh, my other gear up to level eight because i'm not going to be 40 for a while um these items you also want to always check if you can upgrade but you need to run challenge rifts um to get those enigmatic, enigmatic crystals to upgrade these items now right? this vendor here you can also purchase them you can purchase them uh, with resources now if you have 
um, spare scrap and you're very close to the amount of enchanted dust that you need to do an upgrade, sure, buy the 10 or 12 or 15 enchanted dust, dust that you need to do the upgrade. Uh, but otherwise, just wait an extra couple of hours or a day or two before you can upgrade your items. The next thing that you can do twice a week, uh, it's not part of your dailies, uh, is the raid. Uh, the Halakwari, basically. So the Halakwari unlocks it first when you uh, get to know it throughout your Kostari campaign. You unlock it. You're going to be forced to fight uh, the boss in there. Just go to a random raid. You will always find somebody. Now, if, you have, if you're lucky and you actually happen to be able to be part of a warband that has active eight players that continuously raid every week, you get an extra 10 scoria. And in the case of the higher difficulty, an extra 15 scoria, which is what you need to upgrade your Halakwari. Now, you take your scoria, bring it to the blacksmith, and refine it. I'm not sure why that step is needed. It's actually dirt cheap to refine them. It's like 10,000 gold need, for 10. Um, but I don't think scoria is used for anything else. So I don't know why they can't just give you directly hellfire scoria. It's I'm not sure about that. But anyway, so you convert them into hellfire scoria. And what you do then was it is you go to your Halakwari, and you can upgrade your Halakwari. And upgrading your Halakwari gives you more combat rate and also unlocks more slots for you to put trophies in, which you get from defeating demons in the raid. Now, the extra bonus you see here, the Halakwari has one, one trophy that you can put up here and several trophies down here. Now, each trophy has a bonus attribute of combat rating, which gets added to your character. As you can see here, I have plus 10 here, plus 30 here, but the special attribute that a trophy has, only the one that is up here uses that special attribute. So right now I do attack speed plus 10, and this is the trophy I got from beating Vassal on the lowest difficulty the first time. This trophy I got as part of the introduction quest to the Halakwari, and if I put that one up there, you can see my special attribute now is critical hit chance plus 10%. So yeah, upgrade your Halakwari, get the extra combat rating, and do it twice a week. They reset on my server every Monday and Thursday, but it will tell you that right here when it resets. Now, when I'm done with all my activities and there's absolutely nothing more I want to do for the day, I check my codex and there I always exchange the daily activity reward, which basically is um, anything you did that caused you to earn battle points, not exchange them, but earn them adds to your daily activity. And once you have unlocked 120 battle points, you um, get the daily reward. This also works when you reach the cap of your weekly battle point reward, you will still get the potential battle points that you unlocked added to your activity reward. You just don't get them physically to exchange, which is a bit weird. But again, they have a weekly cap on it. Now, that will give you three things, hills, platinum and charm. And the next thing you want to look in your codex is do you want to claim any of your rewards? Now, I try to save the rewards I have and I'm not trying to exchange them until I really need to. Now, the last time I exchanged them was when I was 29 and I exchanged about four or five levels to get uh, to Paragon level 30 because I just wanted to get past that milestone to get into Hell 2. But now between Paragon 30 and 80 or 70, whenever it is you can get into Hell 3 already, I'm not going to waste too much of my battle points. Um, there's not no need. The only thing I want to make sure is that before the 18 days are up, that I complete the max level so I can get the last reward, which is the Fervent Fang. But after that, just save them up. There's a cap on what you can earn every week, but as far as I know, you can stack them infinitely um, in your codex so and exchange them whenever you need to. Now, in my case, I will actually claim them all because they seem to add up exactly to level 40 and unlocking that last gem that you get as a reward in the battle pass would actually benefit me. Uh, so I'm going to just cash them all in. There you go. And that should get me to level 40. And that's the battle pass done. And now I have access um, to the Fervent Fang gem. So to that end, uh, just before I'm logging off and I'm no doing nothing anymore for the day with this game, I do the challenge rift. The reason I leave it till the end is uh, the very last thing is because all the other activities have a potential of giving me gear, which is upgrades. And you want to go into your challenge rift 
obviously with the best gear that you have and that's why i hunted in the codex for example because now i have access to that gem that i was also able to upgrade immediately because of all the other gems that i don't use that i have here that i could turn into a gem fragment so you can see i'm now actually at 285 resident resonance and i was at 260 which all helps me to get that higher combat rating and that is why the last thing after all this you want to do is the challenge rift give yourself the best chance to get on the leaderboards. Now, sure, pay to win will always rule the leaderboards. Nobody's going to argue about that, but you don't have to get that high, especially on the solo ones. If you look at the rewards, you get already 90,000 uh, gold and 400 hills a week. This is a weekly reward. If by the end of the week you're in the top 100 and being in the top 10 only gives you an extra 10,000 gold and 100 hills. So it's not that bad. Even if you get in the top 300, you already get a huge reward so i definitely would say do the do do the challenge rift every week at least uh, once to the best of your abilities even if you only do one level advancement and you end up back in the top 100 so you're absolutely fine now there's a lot more activities you can be doing of course if you have more time as well especially if you are in hell too you might find a group that you can start spamming dungeons with so that you get to that missing set item piece in your uh, gear set, absolutely. Or you might want to spam the library or damnation runs for legendary mobs. All these things are absolutely perfectly valid. This is just a set of activities that I personally like to focus on mainly and also not every day. What I try to do at least every day, because it only takes a couple of minutes, like 15, 20 minutes or so, is the Sanctum, the Bounties and the Assembly. And then, of course, monstrous essences as they happen throughout. I usually avoid all events uh, while I'm doing that quickly if I'm in a rush. And that's just what I try to focus on. And then if I have more time, I do the other activities. And twice a week, maybe I sit down and do battlegrounds because I actually enjoy the battlegrounds, even if we sometimes get absolutely the crap kicked out of us. But anyway, I'm going to leave this here. I hope you found this useful, especially as a free-to-play player and uh, get something out of it. But I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a good time with the video. If you did, remember to kick that like button in the vaults. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And see you guys next time. Until then, as always, feel spaz and happy gaming.